Hey and welcome to my tip special. This is going to be something really new and innovative. The plan is to show you lots of small but helpful tips for Blender. I have quite a few things jotted down here right in front of me, so I'm just going to show you through them. There's also definitely going to be a second tip special video, maybe even more. And just let's see how many tips I'll find up and put together. And don't forget, it's not prohibited to or to well, damn it. It's not prohibited to, uh, to pause the video or maybe even take notes if you want to remember something for future purposes if you didn't re um, get it the first time. And I want to apologize. I've wanted to make a tutorial every day, but now I didn't. It was the weekend. Just I wanted to have a free time on the weekend. Okay, let's get started. The first thing is the preview screen. The preview screen is something really useful. You can use it to preview a part <laughs> of your scene. You activate by pressing Shift P, and then this preview window pops up, and everything that it covers is rendered in a bad resolution and not really good. But it's for preview purposes, and it you can preview your scene from any possible angle. So if I go over here, make the preview screen a little larger. I can preview that whole cube from this side. You can see if the lighting's right, if the texture shows correctly, if everything's like I wanted it to be. That's something really useful. You can also control right on the preview screen, select something. It's not shown in the preview screen that I selected, but it is. Something really useful. Okay, <laughs> that was tip number one. Tip number two is the pivot point. Um, if I want to rotate this cube, I press R, right? then I can rotate it. But what if I don't want to rotate on its middle axis? So I click over here for example and now I want to rotate around that point but it still rotates around its own axis. So I have my cursor over there and press period on my keyboard. Then the 3D cursor jumps over here. Not the 3D cursor, the 3D cursor is that red white thing here. I'm not sure as to what this is called right now. Um, and then pressing R, a uh, period on your keyboard. Then pressing R, you can rotate around that point, which is really useful. And anytime, press comma on your keyboard, and the pivot point will jump back to your current selection, even if the cursor is still over there. That's tip number two. Tip number three: some useful things you know you should know before your render. Always save your work. If your computer crashes while you render. You get pretty mad. I can promise you that. I've experienced that. I've experienced that a few times, and it's really annoying. Press use the preview screen with Shift P and sh see what it works like. So you're not disappointed after what the day rendering, and then what? What's that? That looks horrible. And then you gotta do everything again. That sucks. Use the render preview too. Go into the render menu. Click over here on the preview button and render it out with the preview settings. It gives you a really tiny screen but it shows you everything that you need to know and rendering is a lot faster. Use this if you know that your scene doesn't take too long. If this preview screen rendering takes a long time, that's not useful. Um, if you're rendering an, an animation, use um, Control a no wait, Alt A to um, preview your animation. If you don't do that, that's really dumb. Sorry to say that, but that's not very smart. If you don't even take a look at your animation to check what it looks like before rendering it out, that's stupid. I actually managed to do that once and the animation looked really crappy. And I knew that after what three hours of rendering, so that was stupid. And before you render something really important is check your render settings. Check what's set here. Check what it's set to render to. Check if this is of oh, this is all correct. Check if you've got ambient occlusion or in Yafra, you when using Yafra, the, if, you've if you've got the sky dome turned on because that increases render time by a long shot. So check everything you or when rendering animation, check when it's rendering too, so you actually can find it. That's kind of bad if you can't find your animation later. Now for the next tip, this is something cool. Use Alt B. And you've got a selection tool, and now ev only that what you highlight is going to get visible. So I've selected that part of the cube. Look, I've got somehow only that part of the cube visible. This is kind of cool if you've got a character, for example, you don't want the head visible or something like that. 
You only see the head then. Press Alt B at any time to get everything visible again. Okay, next tip. Center your screen on your cursor. If you, for example, click up there and you don't want to pan up there, just press C. It centers the screen on the cursor. Now I'm going to click back on the object. Oh, you know something there? I can't click on the object like that. So I got to disable the use the 3D transform manipulator blah 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 click in the middle of my cube there damn it press C I can turn that back on so I can le select the object with them clicking on them with the left mouse button and put my cursor there now something also that's very useful is when you've got an object selected press shift D to duplicate it you can duplicate this duplicate it again duplicate it again that's useful. Now we've got a few of these objects here. Might come in handy sometime if you don't want to model something ag um, again and you want the exact same thing. Good. Oh yeah, that's another tip that's just coming to my mind. Um, set back to the default scene by pressing Control X, erase all, click on that, and it sets it back to your defaults. To change your defaults is make your scene as you like it and go to File save default settings or just pressing control u that just saves your default so every time you press control x it gets back to those defaults next tip um yeah i'm going to show this on the camera We've got local axis movement move to the camera view by pressing zero on my numpad let's zoom out a little so you can see and now if i want to move this camera on the z-axis i press g g to grab it and then z to move on the z-axis but wait this is the the Z axis of the whole scene. I wanted to move it on the camera Z axis, so I press Z again or double Z. And I can move it on the camera Z axis using depth. This is quite useful at times when just moving your camera forward or moving objects on their own axis. This is what the tip is actually supposed to be here. Um, let's do this again. G and pressing X. Now this is the world's x-axis, but pressing x again, I can move on the camera's x-axis with a side-by-side. -side. Now if I move this away a bit, got the camera here, and in the camera, in the object panel, I can click on, in the draw panel, draw extra, axis. Now I've got the axis labels here, so I can see what axis of the camera points where. You've got, see the z-axis points right through the camera view, the x-axis is here, and the y-axis is the up and down just so you know next tip um, ah exactly how to hide objects let's for example put two cubes here and you only want one visible for now you press click select one press H it's hidden there it's gone now if you render this it'll be visible so notice that if it's hidden it's not gone it's just not visible press alt H at any time and all the hidden objects will become visible again and something another thing I'll hide this again if I select this cube for instance and press alt H look they're both selected every object when you unhide your objects they automatically become selected or they become added to your selection there's something you should also know